I think that an essential part of a photography workflow means working with accurate colour. This whole subject is a complete minefield, so this is the way I think about it from start to finish. Hi folks, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to be talking about colour, or colour spaces to be exact. Now you might have come across the terms sRGB, Adobe RGB and Profoto RGB. What's that all about then? I know I was confused with these terms when I first started with my photography. Well, it's important to understand that they're all colour spaces that we might be using in our photography. Now I think of each colour space as a language and each language speaks colour in a different way. It's a fairly simple way of thinking about it. Now sRGB is the simplest, safest and most common colour space and it's the most widely used on the web by far. Adobe RGB is a little bit bigger and Profoto RGB is bigger yet again. But this bit is often misunderstood. They all actually have the same number of colours which is over 16 million but it just means that the colours are more spread out in the larger colour spaces. The big thing you have to remember here is that the colours might not actually be identical in different colour spaces. Hopefully if you're watching this then you'll be shooting in RAW. This means that your camera is capturing everything it possibly can. But if you're shooting in JPEG then the camera is throwing away so much of that information and data uh, but it also applies a colour space to it and in the menu you will need to tell the camera what colour space you want the camera to assign to that image. So basically you should set your camera to sRGB unless you are fully aware of the reasons why you should be using another option. sRGB gives you the best compatibility for your JPEGs. But if you shoot in RAW, and hopefully you are, then the colour space setting in the camera is bypassed, it's completely irrelevant. The camera doesn't actually apply a colour space to a raw image. Most computer monitors display the sRGB colour space. Some higher end ones can display P3 or Adobe RGB. A high end Adobe RGB monitor can show the maximum amount of colour. That's absolutely awesome to have, but you don't necessarily need it. But you might choose to have one if you do seriously high-end professional photography, and they're really expensive. But somewhere in the middle of the range is a P3 display, and that shows a wider color space than sRGB, but it's still smaller than Adobe RGB. And I think that is a really good compromise for enthusiast photographers like me. Both of my screens behind me are uh, Dell P3 displays. When you're editing your photos in Lightroom, it means that you might see better, richer and more vibrant colours than on an inexpensive standard screen if you're using something like a P3 display. Lightroom uses something similar to the Profoto RGB colour space, which is actually the widest colour space. You might not necessarily see all the colours, but you've got a better chance of seeing some of them on a wider gamut display than on a standard sRGB monitor. But it's important to note here that it's always a good idea to consider calibrating your screen. Now this is open to debate but personally as photographers I think that really we should all be working with calibrated screens. Some photo specific displays come ready calibrated with a report like this but generally, even brand new monitors are very unlikely going to show accurate color. Colors can fade and shift over time, so I recommend regularly calibrating your screen maybe every couple of months or so. I've been calibrating my screens regularly for years. Sometimes I keep putting it off, but I try to do it generally every two or three months or so. Calibration should improve the accuracy of the colours shown on your screen and keep them consistent over a long period of time. There are a few devices out there which will do this for you. Personally I use this Colour Monkey display from X-Rite. It's a few years old now but it does the job perfectly well for me. 
Um, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, it's software guided, so it guides you through from start to finish. And I'm gonna be making a calibration video very soon, specific to a desktop Mac, like my Mac Studio, and external displays. So watch out for that one. Another frustration is that photos on screen can look very different to printed photos. And there's a simple reason for that. We view images on screen, which is brightly backlit, and we view printed photos on paper, which isn't. So they inherently just look very different. And it's wise to kind of understand and accept that. But generally, most monitors are turned up way too bright for photo editing. So turn your screen brightness way down, a lot dimmer than feels normal. I'd say as a rule of thumb to around about a third. But if you calibrate it with a device like this Color Monkey, you can accurately set your brightness level. Now I've set mine to 100 candelas per square meter. That's the same as 100 nits. But generally anywhere between 80 and 120 is the figure to aim for. Editing your photos in Lightroom is simple. It has no color space settings. It automatically uses its own form of Profoto RGB, which is the best there is. If you export from Lightroom to another app like Photoshop or Topaz to do some further editing, then you need to uh, start thinking more about color space settings. So to keep it simple, make sure you are using Profoto RGB. As I mentioned earlier, it's the widest color space and TIFF as the file format. Send your image back into Lightroom with the same settings and that way you won't lose any color information as it gets sent between the apps. If you mostly keep your photos digitally, then you should export your photos in sRGB to ensure maximum compatibility with just about every screen out there in the big wide world. Uh, you want to do this to make sure your images look right on everyone else's devices. If you were to export your images in any other color space, you can almost guarantee that the colors just wouldn't look right. You have to assume that everybody else's monitors out there can only display sRGB colors and that the colors of your uh, image would be squeezed to fit into this smaller color space, thereby changing some of the hues of some of the shades. You definitely want to avoid that. When it comes to printing, all papers, printers and inks are different from one another. So to get the best possible results, you should use something called an ICC profile. Think of an ICC profile as a small, simple piece of software which translates photo, photo information from Lightroom language into printer language. You can get Lightroom to use it so that it can tell your specific printer how to accurately print your image on a specific sheet of paper with a specific set of inks. Typically, you'll need an ICC profile for each type of paper you'll be printing on. I'll be doing a video about home printing in more detail very soon, so look out for that video. In fact, why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss it, and you'll be helping this channel out in the meantime too. If you've picked up something useful from this video, please do give us a thumbs up and let me know what color space your camera is set to in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video. Bye for now.